What is the strong force? Well, almost a hundred years ago, we discovered that protons have charge, right? That's why we call them proton. They're positively charged. And that charge would repel them from each other. If you take two magnets of the same polarity and you push them together, they will repel, right? So when they found this, they said, ha, oh, you know, the repelling power of, it's called the Coulomb force, is very, very strong. How can the atoms stay together? Atoms should have never formed. And so to solve this problem, they said, oh, well, gravity is not strong enough because at the time, they didn't have black holes. Right? So they said, we're going to invent a new force. We'll call it the strong force. Because it has to be very strong. In fact, it would have to be the strongest force in the universe. And they assume that it was there because the atom is together, so there must be a force squishing it together. But they give no physical understanding, no physical meaning, no source for that energy. They put the strongest energy in the universe in our equation without saying where it came from. You know? And then they said the force is mediated by gluons. The glue. Okay. One way to do physics. I call it physics as you go. Ah, oh, you got a problem here. You just put in the strongest force in the universe. Don't worry about it. You calculate the mass of the universe, you're missing 96% the mass of the universe. Oh, you just invent dark matter, you put it in there. Oh, look, the equation works now. Don't worry about it. Right? So they invented the strong force, and they said, they calculated how strong it would have to be, and they made it exactly the strength it had to be to compress the protons together. And then a big problem occurred. Later on, they discovered that there was quarks, little smaller particles inside the proton, in a teeny, teeny radius that are charged. And they said, oh, now these things are, these things are compressed into a smaller radius again. We need a stronger force than the strong force. But they couldn't really call it the strong, strong force. I mean, that just doesn't look good. So they came up with a be another scheme. The color force. It's nice. It's artistic. You have colors. <laughs> and they said, oh, the color force is will make the color force infinitely strong. Like that, if we find anything smaller, now we have infinitely strong force to deal with it. But think about it. If you have an infinitely strong force compressing into a small volume, squishing, confining into an infinitely small, or a very small volume, what does that make you think of? A black hole. That's right. How do you say black hole in Spanish? Awareness? <laughs> I'm not going to even try. <laughs> I'm going to have to tap into the vacuum of Spanish language. And so, 
this, this squishing was not given any source. Imagine throwing in your physics an infinitely strong force, but not saying where it came from. So obviously, when you ask a physicist how strong is a strong force, they don't really have math that tells you how to calculate it. They have LaTeX QCD, but there is no comprehensive answer. So they tell you a comparison to something they know, which is gravity. So they say, how strong is the strong force? They say, well, if gravity is 1, guess what? The strong force is 10 to the 38 to 10 to the 39 times stronger. <laughs> you see, the difference between the standard model and my model is that in my case, I accounted for the energy necessary to confine, to hold everything together. They just threw it in with no source. So in my case, it's gravity that's doing the job. That's holding everything together. Gravity in standard model is the weakest force of the universe. In this model, gravity is the strongest force of the universe. It holds everything together. It is, it is the vacuum curving. It's the vacuum spinning towards singularity. That is at the center of existence, the force that holds to the center, the mother that holds the child. 